country, although he's widely praised elsewhere. Back in the late 60s and early 70s, militant feminists blockaded his exhibitions and threw acid on one of his artworks. As recently as last year, a major British public gallery turned down a Jones retrospective on the grounds that it didn't want trouble. Is it porn? Is it erotica? Or is it simply pop art? These are not women as objects, they're subjects. At least, that's how Alan Jones describes them. And breasts are what led him away from pure two-dimensional painting. So, um, is this the first time you break away from the painting into the three dimensions? It is pretty well, yes. So, all these figures behind us are yeah. what flowed from, Absolutely. from falses you picked yeah. up in Times Square. Correct. I mean, the fact is that uh, when I... Uh, to fix this thin plastic to the wooden panel, I needed to fill the breast with resin which has some bolts in it. Uh, but of course what I didn't know, because I wasn't a technician, was that if you put that much resin in it melts the plastic. So I had to go back to Times Square and get another pair and I went back three times <laughs> and I realised the man in the shop obviously thought this is a rather more obsessive person than usual. One of the reasons why apparently life for you in Britain has been difficult but so successful in so many, many other countries, is that feminists felt you were really, in the end, simply exploiting the female figure and not really bringing anything back in your work. Well, the tribute to that image is that uh, you're talking about it 55 years, nearly 50-odd years, uh, uh, after I made uh, some furniture, which uh, uh, happened to be really convenient to the uh, then militant feminist uh, uh, cause, and um, if I had been a f militant feminist at the time, I no doubt would have thought it was a terrific image to use. But in fact, um, it has nothing to do with uh, objectifying women. In fact, women are the subject. The sculpture is the object. Well, doesn't the word subjugation come into your head? I it, mean, did, it, did, it didn't come into mind. But, 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 but look at this. I mean, she is incapacitated by somebody's desire to sit on her. Uh, uh, th that's right, and that calls into question really about um, uh, what, an, what, uh, what an art object, what a f the figure can be, because uh, it's, in fact it's not a chair, it happens to look like one, but it's a sculpture. It was his sculpture that incensed Professor Laura Mulvey back in the 1970s. She fired the key feminist salvo against Jones's work. There is a language of fetishism, an iconography of fetishism that one can decipher in a way that the art historian might decipher the ins and outs of medieval religious iconography. But does that leave a feminist appreciating what he's done or decrying it? Definitely decrying it. Uh, what he, to my mind, brought very brilliantly to the surface was this mass of anxiety that exists s swirling around just beneath the respectability of, uh, image, of uh, images of women. And of something that resides in men? Resides in men, in which women aren't really there. Women are only there in absence. So their image actually refers to and signifies something which only relates to men and not to women. But the professor was well outnumbered by those who loved Alan Jones' work, not least the great 1980s pop star, Adam Ant. Alan's work influenced me to, you know, you could see behind the paintings, the working drawings, the reference material from various magazines that I'd not seen before. And there was an element of, of uh, I think, the sex, aversion, style and humour, the four things that I think are uh, tantamount in rock and roll. So I just think it was a, a great theme for me to follow. I believe you came and knocked my door when you were a student. Uh, my twin daughters, who were then about this high, said, Daddy, Daddy, there's two young men at the door. They didn't say young men, they said two men at the door. And so when I went up, uh, it was Adam, and it uh, turned out then to be Jolly Rotten. Yeah. It was a great taboo around the whole idea of burlesque and an s and m and uh, now I, pretty much london or any city in the world has got a burlesque club where young people go and enjoy themselves and play music and, and dress up and i think it's you know really that he was 
of years ahead of his time. Now let's return to the spectacle that is all around us here at the Tower of London. These 